Yes, here's our next speaker, the last before coffee. <laughs> Björn Westrup, I assume that most of you have met him or know him in some way. He's now a senior consultant of neonatology at the Karolinska University Hospital. Uh, but besides this, you are involved in many world research groups. And uh, I can't count them up all, but I know that you're working on different arenas to promote need care. Isn't that a... Thank you. Thank you. My phone is ringing. Thank you very, very much for, for inviting me. And it's so fantastic to be back, actually. Uh, I have just to stop this. OK, sorry, technical thing. Why is it so imp in, in, uh, nice to be here? Because actually in Lund was one of the, f the main in institutions that supported our development in Falun. And uh, I would like to pay my tribute to Professor Sven Insen and, and Karin. And uh, uh, you were so instrumental in supporting us in, in Falun uh, from a scientific point of view. And uh, it was uh, very, very important for the development in Sweden and support Agneta and me in, in our work. And also, of course, Hugo, who sort of competed with Nils to, to get us to Stockholm. And Nils said, OK, I'm the head of the department. I don't have time, I, as much time as I wish I had. You can go to Hugo. He will support you very well. And you certainly have. It, it has been fantastic, important, uh, all your work over these decades. So, um, and then I will not talk so much about Sweden anymore. My, my task is to talk about the global experience. And um, uh, so, um, first, I would like to, to uh, give uh, sort of a few words about the, uh, the term infant and family centered developmental care, IFCDC. This term has now been accepted not only in Europe where we developed it uh, through the EFCNI work, but also in the US. So actually, we would recommend everyone to use that terminology in the future. It's a generic term for nurturing care of the newborn with the goal to ensure the best health and development into adulthood uh, for every individual infant by optimizing both the individual care, but also the hospital systems. And it's founded on the leading edge work of Barry Brasselton and Heidi Lissals, of course, and also the recreation of infants' rights. So Heidi Lissals' work from the 80s has been the foundation for this. We have to remember that, definitely. To give you a global perspective, I think it's, of course, important to... See, can I use the cursor in the, here somewhere? Yeah, can you see the cursor? Of course, you can see that the, the preterm birth associated deaths and neurodevelopment impairments are, of course, unequal distributed. So, you, of course, the sub Saharan Africa and South Asia and Southeast Asia contributes to most, uh, the most burden of, of premature birth. And it's important to remember that it's not only US and, and Europe. So, a few years ago, um, together with the NITCAP trainer or NITCAP uh, director in, um, in Sydney, uh, Kay Spence, we developed this model of how you can perceive and think about the global perspective of infant and family centered care. The first triangle is actually the theory base and training requirements, so sort of depicts that, and the developmental care programs and interventions. The parallel triangle is the global target estimates how to implement these different layers of IFCDC. Theories and training taught by professional organizations, this triangle, for example, the Brasselton Touchpoint Center and also the NITCAP Federation International uh, and other institutions. These programs, all these programs, vary in regards to comprehensiveness of training and support for systems change. Some programs include several or all intervention exemplified above, and I would claim that NITCAP actually does. 
and the global, then we mean uh, all babies in high and middle and low resource settings. And this, is an, this ambition uh, to achieve the implementation of different knowledge uh, phases of IFCDC must, is supported, must be supported and in collaboration with a large number of organizations and associations. The top of the triangle is breastfeeding. We think that the this is maybe doesn't require that much theoretical background, but it's much easier and very important to, to spread throughout the world, of course. Exclusive breast milk feeding, very, very important. Then we took examples like immediate skin to skin contact for stable infants, and we'll come back to that later, and kangaroo mother care with, for stable neonates and continuous follow, uh, uh, follow up programs as well. This is a little bit easier to implement, but still maybe not as easy as breastfeeding implementation. And then we have basic, intermediate and advanced programs like FINE, close collaboration, family in uh, intervention and uh, MBO and, and FI care and so forth. Uh, more complex and, and more to, to, to learn, but all, and also, of course, more complex to, to scale up. And NIDCAP, we have, if, as you know, all know about NIDCAP. So I think this is important to have in mind. And my task for today was, is to report some recent development on how this thinking that we all are aware of and we have heard about uh, from the, diff the previous speakers that are so important, how this has now caught attention on, on a wider perspective than not only in the NIDCAP community. And one thing that I think is important is that the nurturing care for early childhood development has become a great interest on, of the WHO and the UNICEF since a few years back. And um, when I first heard about the nurturing care, I re really <laughs> understood that this is the same thing as Heidi has been talking about about two, three decades earlier. So what they, these slides are actually borrowed from the, uh, the WHO and UNICEF. The evidence for nurturing care, they claim, the foundation for lifelong health, productivity and well-being is built in early years, starting from pregnancy. At least 250 million children below five years of age, that means 43% of all below uh, five years of age, are at risk of not achieving their developmental potential. So it's, imagine, it's very hard to imagine. Nurturing care is what the young children need to develop physically, mentally, and socially. And investing in early childhood development reduces the inequities, as you pointed out very importantly. Uh, of course, this is new news for you, but I just want to show you what is now out there in, in the, the global uh, um, communities. And also very, very appropriate for this session, for this conference, is that they claim that you have the genetic endowment and you have epigenetic modifications through the environment, which actually uh, affects adult health and well-being. So they claim this. And also, then now they started with nurturing care in general for babies under five, and then last year, sorry, th that was introduced in 2018. Sorry, I, I skipped a few slides here. So I will not go into details, but they, of course, uh, uh, underline that you have to start the intervention below uh, three years of age. Uh, and um, they're talking about what the ch child's brain and body ex expects and needs, and, and that is, of course, um, good health, adequate nutrition, um, uh, opportunities for early learning, and also responsive caregiving. So they highlight responsive caregiving in this concept of, of nurturing care. And for the systems change, they explain it like enabling policies, supportive services, empowered communities, and uh, improve caregivers' capabilities in order to achieve the goal here in the middle. So very similar to our ambitions. And last September, they actually uh, published a thematic brief uh, on nurturing care for every newborn, uh, which was highlighted for on the newborns, of course. And you can look it up on the internet. I will just give you a few examples from that brief. And they uh, say that why is it important for every newborn? It's important to be cared for in a nurturing environment. Babies not only survive, they also help to, th to thrive. 
and yet too many infants, of course, are deprived of their right to receive nurturing care. Interestingly, and I'm very happy to, to, to tell you that in this brief, they have a large portion about IFCDC. And they also have the standards for IFCDC that we developed in the, within the EFCNI network. And I think for in this community, I think it's interesting to see that they actually placed the standard on education and training at the top. So I think it's very supportive for our ambitions. I, I was so happy. I wasn't uh, writing this. I had an uh, opportunity to, to review it before it was published, and, and they were very receptive on, on suggestions, I would say. So I, I think it's, it's fantastic. And I will not go into details, but you can say that they talk about creating a nurturing environment. They, and um, these things you can read yourself. It's new news for you, but it's important that it is this now published in a WH UNICEF document. Zero separation, for example, support skin to skin contact, smooth transition to care to home, a, 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 the environment, enabling environment, and invest in the workforce and so forth. So it's it, very, very nice to see what they have done. Also, I'm also extremely happy that within this thematic brief, there was a, quite a large portion of case presentation, five five cases were presented from all over, all over the world. And one of the cases was from Dr. Lama Shafaredin in Beirut, Lebanon, and she's NITCAP trained. And they, she described in this brief how care for child development for preterm and sick infant newborns were supported by the NITCAP program. So, wow, <laughs> I think this is an uh, uh, approval from the WHO and UNICEF. I think it's fantastic. So nurturing care matters, they claim, and we can all agree on that, can't we? One of the great uh, uh, supporters of this brief and also an uh, organization that was able to comment on the brief was EFCNI, and I will also for give you the global perspective of this European parent organization is that they also have formed Global Alliance for Newborn Care, which is called GLANCE. And there are 44 parent organizations in all continents run global awareness campaigns to address the disparities in care, as you mentioned, Elizabeth, and also policies for the prevention of complicating during preconception, pregnancy, birth, and follow-up and continuing care after discharge. So not only the WHO and UNICEF, but also the, the, the largest um, parent organization association, I would say, in the, in the world have now f f these focuses, which is very fantastic. So I also, uh, I will continue to look into one of the, the, the details here and in, of this triangle. Um, we have heard lots about NITCAP and we'll, I don't need to, to talk about that, but I will also present some new development about the skin to skin contact and KMC which has caught enormous interest during the last couple of years. Again, the global burden of low birth weight. These slides are from, from uh, as you can see, I borrowed from, from the World Health Organization. 20 million infants are born with low birth weight each year, and that's about 15% of all births. 95% of these are from low and middle income countries. And these infants account for 70 to 80% of all neonatal deaths every year in the world. So low birth weight infants are also at increased risk of early growth retardation, not only dying, but growth retardation and developmental delay. So um, <coughs> WHO has uh, coordinated and uh, ran an, a, a large trial that we published in, the, in May last year, the W immediate KMC study. And I could probably say that actually it was initiated from the Karolinska, uh, uh, Niels Bergman especially, and, and I have been involved in the planning of this, and we got attention from the Gates Foundation, and then they, we find, together we decided that this was too big for us. Agnes has been very instrumental in this, Agnes Linear, in this project. 
very much from the very beginning as well. So the WHO took over the, the organization of the trial and it was a large trial in different, four different African countries and also in India. You can read about that. I will just shortly say that the intervention we studied, so we studied babies between 1,000 gram and 800 gram, 1.8 gram, a kilo, 800 gram. The components of intervention was continuous skin-to-skin -skin contact with the mother or surrogate, a relative or some person, starting within two hours of birth, regardless of stability or not, and aiming for over 24 hours per day throughout the whole hospital stay. That was the intervention. We also had counseling and support for exclusive breast milk feeding and breastfeeding and provision of required medical care for mother and baby in skin-to-skin -skin contact without separation as much as possible. So that was the, the... And this is a picture from Ghana. Another picture from Ghana. The interesting thing is that we, when we planned this and we described this uh, from the Karolinska, we said we, you need to understand that need this, you need system change in order to provide this intervention. So, um, this has been acknowledged, of course, by the WHO. We need policy to permit mother and surrogates to stay 24-7, 24-7. You need mother NICUs to keep mother and babies together right from the birth with zero separation. And uh, WHO claim in their press re release that this revolutionized the way neonatal intensive care is currently practiced. This is a picture from India. In, uh, you can see we have pretty well equipped uh, uh, units actually with CPAP, for example. So, um, and then there's also we needed to have a very close collaboration between obstetrics and neonatal units. And so you can see a, a round on the obstetric round and almost similarly uh, uh, neonatal rounds. Both the mother and baby received minimal package of care that is this defined by WHO. It was already published. But we needed, to, of course, to, to convince the healthcare workers in order to accomplish this. The conclusion of this trial, published last May, was that immediate KMC for 1 point to 1.8 ki kilogram infants significantly reduces the risk of neonatal death by 25%. We had over 3,000 infants. Actually, stuck, the study was closed before completion because of the, these results. So after 75% of recruitment, they, they stopped the study uh, board. And secondly, immediate KMC provided f to every 27 babies saves one life which would translate it, you can imagine all the babies that are born, 20 million babies maybe in this risk group, um, uh, 150 lives globally would be saved if you could implement this all throughout the world. And they also, WHO also says that mother newborn couplet care in mother NICUs is a paradigm shift. So, of course, we are happy, Agnes, aren't we, when we work with this and the results. And this is a colleague from, from, from Norway, Stavanger, that was also involved in this study. I would also like to just shortly mention that we, in parallel, we had a study in the high-income setting in Karolinska and in Stavanger, where this colleague worked. And here, um, we will not talk about that, but I would just mention that Stina has been extremely important in this study. Thank you very much for, for your collaboration here. And then there's another big, big trial that I think you need to know about and that has had implications for the following, the, future, the near future. And that is the community-initiated kangaroo mother care. And it's a study on survival. And these babies were different. They were heavier and they were clinical stable. They initiated the KMC within not the first two hours, but within the first three days and it was uh, supported to continue at home. They had a control group with uh, controlled conventional care. And the outcome was also mortality at 28 days at, and also at six months. And it was a very poor district in, in uh, northern uh, India. And they had, can you imagine, 8,000 babies in the randomized control trial. We thought we had many, <laughs> 4,000, but they had 8,000. 
So, interestingly, this was published um, uh, one and a half year ago. You can see that in the, co the mortality at six months of age was staggering high, almost 5%, and also it's very high in the control arm, but the difference is quite significant. So the, it can be done. If people, small babies can actually be, be cared for at home. Their conclusion, uh, we have not been involved in this trial. This was another group of, in, in, in WHO. The community initiated KMC reduced neonatal, neonatal mortality, similar to our study, by 30% with the impact extending to six months of age and actually increasing. And it's uh, used as a complementary strategy with facility-initiated KMC, as we talked about in our study. Community-initiated can improve coverage, particularly for the home births and those discharged early from facilities, which so often is 1.5 kilos. And just a picture of Ravij, Rajiv Bal, uh, the man in the middle here, uh, he is um, head of the WH research and guidelines, uh, and, and he has been a fantastic person, I would say, very impressive uh, person in, at WHO. And here's, the, of course, Niels Bergman that has also been very instrumental, and a colleague from India at the training session, as you can understand. So, what about the implica uh, uh, implica implications for the newborn evidence of KMC? A WHO scale, say, scale up KMC model needs to be implemented in all facilities that provide care for low birth weight infants. KMC should be expanded to cover all uh, LBV babies. And uh, home born uh, can now be potentially covered by community initiated KMC. And we need to have a paradigm shift in the care of preterm. We need to introduce mother newborn couplet care. They don't, haven't said that in their papers yet, but they will, I hope. And, but they call it mother NICUs. And challenging is a large part of the KMC community believes that the only 24, 24 continuous KMC is effective. And um, this is resulting that many people think that it's impossible. But we think we can have aim like 24, 24 but you, you can get results even if it's less. We had about... 20 hours per day in our study. And large proportions of providers and the population at large is still, it, this is um, that high tech solution incubators are better than the KMC. And how can community initiated KMC be implemented as routine programs? And then we come back to the uh, mother, uh, mother newborn couplet care concept. So they have formed, and I'm a proud member of this group, Stage KMC Working Group with uh, members uh, from um, WHO, expert group, and other scientists, and one of, I'm one of those. And they have country program managers, representatives in this working group, UN agencies. They have bilateral developmental agencies, as USAID and, and uh, NORAD, and also Japan. Donor agencies like BGF. Save the Children, and professional bodies of, of uh, uh, midwives, obstetricians, pediatricians, and so forth, and nurses, and, and uh, are involved in this work. And um, uh, I'm pretty soon, so, and EFC and I again, and global um, persons. So actually, uh, they, WHO had put uh, kangaroo mother care as the first priority topic which is fantastic. And uh, if you com combine not only the immediate, but also do it all over from the whole hospital stay, they claim that uh, almost 400,000 extra newborn deaths could be prevented if, if we could scale this up. So there are substantial challenges in achieving this. We need to build consensus among all stakeholders. And uh, we need to have strategies how to do that. And I can tell you that three outputs from this group will be published in next month, I think, or at least in May. And it will be a, glo a global position paper on KMC, and it will be an implementation guidance and also recommendations of continued learning. And I am totally uh, um, convinced that IFCDC will be a growing component within this thing. So I think we should be very, very happy about this latest development the last years. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Björn, for this very interesting talk. Thank you. Very Thank you. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I give this to Agneta. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Agneta. <laughs> Any questions? From Lena? Thank you, Bjorn, for a very interesting lecture. I, I would just like to ask about the fathers. Do you feel that there is any resistance around the world of fathers doing KMC? Yes, there, uh, there are definitely resistance in some cultures. India, for example, has been the difficulties, and we couldn't include fathers in the trial because of this re resistance. Mm -hmm. But we had, every family had some female relatives or friends that was included. But on the other hand, now when they have practiced this in, 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 um, in general practice in, in India, the fathers are actually coming more and more into the unit. And they do skin, skin to skin. And you should know that in, in for example, in Brazil, which is a, not a small country, it's a fantastic large country. They don't call it KMC, they, ca they call it kangaroo care, just in order to involve fathers. And you know, of course, in Sweden and in Europe, fathers are very much involved. So I think this is a development that will continue. Maybe? No? Yes. Thank you, Bjorn. I should never invite you, giving you less than an hour. I knew that already, but... I'm sorry. <laughs> We're a little bit uh, late in our schedule, but we will have 30 minutes coffee break. Go out and see our sponsors. Um, they are really um, vital for having a meeting like this. So uh, listen to what they have to say. And if you want to, you can uh, find the QR link for the social Zoom. Uh, use your phone and uh, go into that room and see if you have any friends there online. <laughs>